bush she's warming up it's gonna be a good day that's not smoke if you're wondering that's not smoke that's just you know, for pretty much water vapor sort of a little bit of smoke maybe <laughs> it's cold and when diesel engines are cold they they do that that's how you know when they've warmed up when they stop doing that for the most part depending how cold it is though if it's minus 40 outside you're gonna be having white clouds come out of your exhaust anyway it doesn't matter what you do it's, it's, it has to do with the temperature well we're here it's uh wednesday we're very excited very excited i'm here to tell you that three more days and it's the weekend very excited at noon today we are halfway to the weekend and who knows, I might end up working on the weekend. What do I have going on this weekend? Britt and I have a lot of doctor's appointments coming up. I should actually say Britt has a lot of doctor's appointments because you guys know that I've been following for a while. I'll just fill in the new people real quick. We are going through uh, in vitro fertilization. Uh, we have a lot of IVF problems. We have this big procedure that's coming up uh, in uh, January, February, March, in the, in the first quarter of this year anyways. So there's going to be a lot of uh, appointments and stuff to get to on her part and I want to be there with her obviously every step of the way doctors can't find anything wrong with us at least not yet but uh, this should increase our chances of having a child so we haven't had a baby yet and we have been married since 2017 and we would like to create a little uh, a little life form that looks like us and uh, <laughs> we're very excited about it so uh, anyway this procedure is going to help that that happen hopefully so in the next quarter that's what we're going to be focusing on a lot uh, we've already focused all of our finances towards this so we got that covered now thank goodness we can start redirecting that back towards our debt again get debt paid off but anyways that's what's going on in our life right now if you're new here welcome here down below in the description there's a, a, a whole description of what i'm doing what i'm at where i'm at in life right now this is a a vlog channel so it's a story channel a lot of talking sharing my thoughts and down below in the comment section we have a little discussion you can leave your comments there i go through all the comments all the time i respond to as many as i can uh, sometimes there's quite a few but i encourage you to go down there uh, be respectful to others down there that's the only request i have and i uh, just share life from my point of view i'm a truck driver in canada so Join the conversation. Welcome here. Don't forget to subscribe. I've been doing this for a long time. We're on vlog, what, 2,440 now, I think? So there's been a lot of vlogs made already. <laughs> there's been a slight change of plans. It has been one of those mornings. Cold, which means everything's going wrong. <laughs> Actually, not everything's going wrong. We're still getting it done. Technically, everything's good, but I am in a different Peterbilt. My truck is uh, not liking the cold so much. The well, shop's gonna have to take a look at it. It's not building air pressure again. Uh, same issue as uh, the last couple of times. So they'll take her in there, they'll fix her up, and we'll be back in it. Back in the old beat in no time, I'm sure. This cold weather messes with trucks like crazy. It's difficult to keep them running when it gets down. Like it's minus 25 right now, it's not even that cold. But it gets down to minus 35 and below and it's it's hard to keep trucks running. It doesn't matter if they're brand new. Sometimes if they're new, that makes it worse because they got way more things that can go wrong. And the older trucks, you know, they, they get cold. Parts break in the cold. That's winter time. That's what we were talking about this morning though, right? But we gotta keep going. So I hopped in another truck, I got this one going. And we're gonna go pick up our load in this one. This is identical to the one that I drove uh, on the highway. Uh, this, this unit is $30.99. This brings back so many memories. The last truck I was in when I was on the highway, and it was me and Diesel, was a Peterbilt 579 with an 80 inch sleeper, just exactly like this. Identical, this is an identical twin truck. They're great trucks. Uh, the driver that was in this truck uh, I don't know what happened but this truck is available now so in the in the interim while I'm waiting for my truck to get fixed I know they want to do a whole bunch more work to it yet but they're waiting for uh, an opportunity for some time in the shop they're very busy we have a really big fleet of trucks and, and they're busy and uh, you know everything's in a priority sequence but there's more that they want to get done to my truck yet 
we're just waiting for an open window. Maybe this is it. Maybe I'll stay in this truck for a little bit and I can do whatever needs to get done on that one. Cause I think my truck is the last one of the city trucks that hasn't been like rebuilt or had some heavy work done to it. I think mine's uh, in line to get some more work done to it soon. That'll happen when it happens, as long as it's running and passes a safety and it's good to go. And don't mess with my pipes, okay? This is a message to them there. They're good guys, I like them there. But when you take it in and fix it up, those pipes have gotta be loud. I like the loud pipes, okay? That Those aren't a problem. They don't need to be fixed. They need to be louder. Loud pipes. If you're gonna do anything to my exhaust, make it louder, please. <laughs> so for those of you that have never seen inside a Peterbilt 579 before, I figured I'd give you a quick look around in here. I really enjoyed spending uh, spending time in this truck when I was on the road. And it's very spacious. It's a lot more spacious than it looks on the outside. You get in here and yeah, the, the roof is a little bit lower. It's a mid-roof truck. I'm five foot 10. There's a good six inches or so from the top of my head. I can stand up straight here and in the front cab as well. I'm just touching the roof. So this is about five foot 10. Just gotta duck a little, oh. Yeah, just gotta duck a little bit to go underneath that there. <laughs> yeah, this is a bed up here. This comes down and there's, it's actually two smaller mattresses that go side by side and then you have a bed up here. Obviously just papers and stuff up here. This isn't my regular truck, so it hasn't been detailed. We had a driver in this truck uh, that's no longer with us from what I heard. And we haven't had the chance to detail it yet, but I'm in the truck today, so here we are. A nice big bed that you can stretch out in. And see, my head is touching the back wall here. Remember, I'm five foot 10. And my feet can just barely touch the seats. So, a lot of space. And it's nice that this folds up here, half the bed, so you can sit down here and not worry about bumping your head. The room for your cup holder there. It is an automatic transmission. I'm not a fan of these transmissions. Uh, for one, I like to have manual transmission. I want to shift my own gears. I want to be in control of my own truck 100%. But for automatics, uh, as far as this one goes, it likes to bog down a lot. I remember when I was in this truck in the hills, like even if the hills of Quebec or of Appalachia or uh, the Rocky Mountains, it, it wants to bog down. It doesn't quite have enough gears. It's a 10 speed and I think it should be at least 13. But that's the transmission that's in these specific trucks. They work, but when I get to the hills, I just turn it into manual and I, I shift it myself, just with a button on the little shifter there. Well, you got lots of room. Lots of storage up here. I have a fridge down here and a freezer. A closet in here to uh, hang your jackets and clothes. Two windows on either side of the bunk that I would usually have open if I was in this truck all the time. Because I like, I like the natural light to come in. Then over here on this side, you got an extra little storage in there yet. Not quite as fancy of a control panel back here as the T680 has. Uh, you have two lighter plugs here. You can charge your phone right in here. You have a nice little desk right here that I always used as a little editing space for my vlogs. But uh, you can use it for whatever you need it for. The T680 obviously takes the cake for me. It is a little bit of a nicer truck. The T680 sitting over here has that swing out table over here and a lot more space, right? But for a mid-size roof, it's a very comfortable truck and it rides like a Cadillac. It rides very smooth. A neat feature that this truck has that most trucks do nowadays is it has an auto feature on the thermostat here. See, you could like turn the thermostat to like 72 degrees and then just press auto and it'll keep your truck at an even 72 degrees in here. So if you're very, uh, fancy and you like to have a very precise temperature in the truck while you're sleeping. Peterbilt's got you covered. Well, this is what the exterior looks like. So it doesn't have the long nose. For those of you not familiar with what Peterbilt 579s are. But it does have quite a bit of space in the sleeper there. not going to be my permanent truck, obviously, but 
it is identical to the one that I was in with diesel. $30.99. So you may have noticed, I have a box behind me. I have a new mission. We finished our first mission and we did it so well, they gave us another one. That's what we're gonna tell ourselves. I had to quickly run into Winnipeg here where they grab a few pallets, well, a few, 24 pallets. Apparently they're smaller than usual. Cause there's already like four skids in here and they said they're gonna put another 24 in. They must be like three by three pallets or four by three or something. But they said they could fit it all, so here we are. Here we sit, here we wait. Of course, being in this truck gives me all the warm, fuzzy memories of being on the road with diesel. That was good, that was good times. Maybe one day again. I'm having good times now doing this, so. I, I keep saying this, you know? I'd like to just do everything. I'd like to be everywhere at once and do everything at the same time. But eh, I'm only one person and uh, we got a lot of doctor's appointments coming up in the next couple of months, so it's a good thing I'm home every night. Uh, I'm not too sure what the schedule of them will be. I think we had one meeting on the 10th. Got another one shortly after. And then throughout the next couple of months. I guess they won't be like all the time, but every couple of weeks for sure. So I want to make sure that I'm at home and, you know, not stuck out in New Brunswick or something like we were last time. That was a truck just like this. That was 3101. Remember when we were stuck in New Brunswick because of a sensor or something like that? I forget what it was. We stayed in a motel there overnight. Yeah, that was, that was a good time. You know, I had fun, but that trip, uh, we missed some important windows with our fertility journey here and stuff. And I started realizing, you know what? If I don't come off the road, this may never happen. So to give us the best shot possible, I need to be around home every day. And then uh, we started this journey that we're on now. But yeah, being in this truck, it definitely does bring back all the good memories. I don't got diesel with me. Yeah, that's not my truck. If this was my truck that I was assigned to, oh yeah, he'd be with me every day sitting back there photobombing me in every shot, making me making me retake all my shots while he's bathing himself back there. You have no idea how many times I had to re re-vlog something. I had a really good point, it was really funny, and then I rewatched it and Diesel's back there giving himself a bath in what may be deemed inappropriate ways on YouTube. He's a dog, it happens, but I don't want that behind me. Well, I'm trying to give you a, a funny joke or tell you, talk to you about something serious. Got my dog licking himself in the back there. But yeah, if I was assigned to this truck or a truck like this, I'd definitely bring him with me every day again. I miss having him with me. But uh, I'm definitely, definitely not getting tired of being home every night and every weekend. Getting so much done. And it's so nice to actually have family life at home right now. But. You know, once you get on the highway and that gets in your blood, it's always there. That That is always going to be in the back of my mind. That's never going to go away. That's why I say, maybe one day we'll be back out there. Maybe. Maybe I'll get my W9 one day. Well, let's see if they fit it all in there. i panel straight up to the back here in a second. Ooh. What do they get in here? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 20. The paperwork here says it doesn't say. Oh, 10, 16, 17, 18, 9, 20. 20. Okay, so it's not 24, it's 20. Perfect. Time to go. So whatever uh, froze up in my truck that time we got towed, uh, froze up again. I don't know if it's the cold that's doing it then. Because they replaced, at least they told me that they replaced everything that was bad on that air system. So obviously there's something else that's uh, causing problems in, all, in the old peak. But uh, they'll get to the bottom of it, you know? Like I said, that's to be expected, it's an old truck. You know, things break, 
things break on new trucks too. You get a new truck and you get a whole bunch of different new problems. They're different, but they're new problems. Sometimes they're even more expensive because you got to bring them back to the to the uh, to the dealership to get them worked on for warranty. And, you know, once warranty's gone, well, then that's when all the sensors decide to go out. And there's a million sensors on all these new trucks. And they're all like a thousand bucks each, if not triple that. So, <laughs> trucks are trucks. So yeah, at least we'll be home. I mean. The sun is still up and I'm on my way home, so that's progress, right? That's something good. The days are getting longer again. That's nice. Glass is half full. Yeah, it's cold outside and everything breaks in the cold, but hey, we got a nice warm home to go home to thanks to our natural gas. Imagine if we didn't have that. I mean, I guess you could have an electric furnace, but imagine your electric bill. Electricity is more expensive here than natural gas, even though Manitoba has some of the cheapest electricity rates in North America at, what, eight cents per kilowatt hour? And it's all, I think it's like 99% clean renewable energy in Manitoba from our hydroelectric dams up north. Manitoba is one of the greenest, if not the greenest province of Canada. I mean, British Columbia would try to probably pipe up and say, hey, what about us? Yeah, 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 BC. You guys, you guys and all your taxes out there, man. <laughs> what are you doing? Just gonna, I'm just gonna, you, know, you weren't gonna take my cow, man, were you? Maybe. Can I see him? Can I see him? Oh, he's so nice. He's so nice. Look, he wants to sit and look at you. He wants to sit and look at you. <laughs> it's, it's all slimy already. It's all slimy. You like the slime back on the weasel. <laughs> it's your special cow, Chevy. I know, I'm not allowed to touch it. No, you're not, because what would you do? I want to find out what's inside. We're not going to find out what's inside Diesel's cow, okay? Oh, 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 I guess, okay. I know, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult, I know. Stop looking at him that way. His inside belong on the inside. Well, maybe there's a squeaker. There's only one way to find out. Just saying. So a little bit of a frustrating start to the day for me with the truck situation, but hey, it ended up pretty good. Got to drive that nice Pete around all day. I don't know. Be driving it around tomorrow too. But I told you yesterday I was going to talk about our crawl space today. We have a small little crawl space entranceway that I can barely squeeze down into. That'll be for another day on a weekend vlog sometime when I take you down under the house. Our crawl space under our floor is only about 12 to 18 inches high, depending on where you are under the house. And uh, there's a, a support beam that goes down the center of the house here. And that's just about maybe six to 10 inches off the ground. So I don't know if I could, uh, I don't know if I could fit between there. I didn't try, I just stayed on the one side of the house, I'd have to go underneath. I think on that end of the house, there's a little bit of a, a dugout. Someone dug out a little bit of spot so that you can get under there and check the other side. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I went under there because I wanted to check on things. I hadn't been down there yet. The, our inspector went down there when uh, we bought the house, but I don't know if he didn't go all the way under there or what. I went all the way to the front of the house here and I noticed that two of our vents for our, our vents in our living room here. Uh, one second here, let me uh, turn the lights on here for you so that I can share this with you a little bit more so you understand what I mean. The ductwork uh, had come apart. Uh, okay, we have two vents in our living room. We have one there and we have one there. And I was wondering why no airflow was coming through there, right? So I was, I kind of figured what was going on. That's one of the reasons I went underneath into the crawl space. I wanted to figure out what was blocking it or what had happened. Turns out that the, the whole pipes had fallen down. Someone had cut them just 
barely long enough that they just barely sit. And if you, like, shake the floor or anything, they would just fall down. Just my luck with houses, right? So I, I went under there and I actually taped them together so that they wouldn't come apart again. And I put them back together. Now we got good airflow back here in the living room again. So we've had a little bit of a... Been having issues with humidity in this house a little bit. We've had to manage it uh, pretty closely. We have a dehumidifier here. And uh, uh, we have fans in all the rooms circulating the air. But uh, it's, it's strange, right, in the wintertime that we have high humidity in the house. When there's no water running, no standing water anywhere, nothing besides us and the dogs that are creating mo moisture in the house. There's no moisture in the attic. <clears throat> the only thing I can think of is that it's a dirt floor in the crawl space down below. And, uh, but it's been like that since the 70s, and I've been down there, and there's no mold buildup. There's no mildew. Uh, there's a little bit of condensation on the outside foundation walls, though. Uh, the crawl space is heated. They do have uh, furnace vents that are going down there uh, that are circulating the air down there because it's not a vented, uh, it's a sealed crawl space. I want the air to keep moving in there, right, so that it, it doesn't sit still. So the fan is usually on on the furnace, keeps the air moving in there so it doesn't stand still. But it also gets heated that way, and that makes sure that our pipes down there don't freeze. Otherwise, it would, it would freeze everything. We'd have bigger problems. So that's where I'm thinking. So my plan uh, for this summer or late fall, before next winter, is I want to put a vapor barrier down on the dirt. Completely seal it off, insulate the entire uh, crawl space edges, the walls, the cement walls. Uh, insulate that all and seal it all off so that uh, the moisture from the ground stays in the ground and doesn't come up and possibly cause problems in the future. But this house has been here, like I said, since the 70s, as far as I know. That's what we were told when we bought it. Thank you for watching and letting me rant to you there a little bit. Uh, projects. Always fun, right? If I'm not working at work, I'm working at home. And if I'm not working, I'm sleeping. That's my life. I'm an adult. So, all you young people watching me right now, get ready for this. This will be your life one day. You can't get away from it. Alright? You can't be lazy. You can't let everybody else do the work for you. Alright, don't be those people. Don't be those people. Okay? Some things you gotta get professionals to do, okay? Uh, I understand. I might even get professionals to install the vapor barrier for me just to make sure it's done right. That can be a kind of a, a tricky thing. I've never done it before, and I wanna make sure that I don't waste my money and time doing it wrong. Uh, I could do it. Whatever. Either way, even if I hire someone to do it for me, I still gotta go and spend time working to get the money to pay them. And then while they're doing that, I've still got other work to do to maintain this. And this is just a tiny house. Lots of maintenance, right? So. Get ready, kids, and uh, appreciate your parents because they're providing a home and a roof over your head, and you have no idea what it takes to keep that there for you. I didn't. When I was a kid, I lived at home with mom and dad. I had no idea everything that goes into owning a home or providing a home and keeping it standing and in good shape. Anyways, I'm not trying to lecture you. I'm just trying to bug you a little bit. Enjoy your childhood, okay? Don't listen to what I just said. Don't worry about your future where everything's going to be work, work, work all the time. Enjoy your childhood. Go have fun. Go ride your bike. What are, you, what are you kids doing nowadays? I rode my bike around when I was a kid. Do they still do that? I don't think they do. Don't They probably... Put your phone down and go outside and do something fun, okay? <laughs> Build a snow fort. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have kids. What do I know? <laughs> but I will. I will. One day. Okay? Thanks for watching, everybody, and putting up with me. I'll see you tomorrow.